today it's an easy simple day what up justin what's up doug give me a little introduction what's dude up, man? where are you from what's your deal i see you repping the terror crew up in here dog san francisco just moved down here last year loving it so far san diego i like it san diego well, loving we got uh today we we are putting an 8.8 .8 on some ranger danger this dude literally blew his his ring gear and ring and pinion apart. How'd this thing sound when it came in here, dude? Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing as nuts and bolts in a blender. Yeah, dude. So he's ripping this thing off. He pulled the drive shaft. We took an angle finder um, and we measured the angle of the pinion angle while it's up on the stands. Measured our pinion angle here. Got our leaf spring perches welded on um, nice and, f and flat. Uh, also, sanded and welded the tubes up um, where it meets the center section. Uh, we have some shock mounts. A bunch of this stuff can be found at Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Um, these, these conversions are pretty simple. I mean, there might be a couple bumps in the road. This is a manual uh, manual Ranger 4.0, so we are not going to be able to until we get the other cables for the the e brake be able to use those. Um, however. It's pretty straightforward, man. There's not a whole lot to this. So uh, we're gonna keep charging on this. Uh, Justin came to lend a hand. Um, yeah, hopefully we got some more little easy projects like this for people that are looking to make simple upgrades. This 8.8 .8 rear end with disc brakes is uh, super common, super easy. And then that's something that we also have on the hammerhead and we welded the, the spider gears. This kid's gonna be driving this truck on the street a lot, so it has a limited slip, so he's not gonna be he's not gonna be needing his spider gears and all that stuff welded up. However, the Jeep, we wanted to bark in that Hoonigan building battle, so we just burned that shit up and, and went with it. Um, the hardest part of this swap is probably cleaning, cleaning up the stock axle, taking play bar off, play bar off the old leaf perches off and just spending that amount of time grinding all that stuff off. So we're gonna keep rolling and uh, make it happen. Look at that dog. What's up, doggy? It's just handling it. So the old the old stock Ford Ranger rear end is out. 8.8's in. Uh pinioning was looking good. We got some some shock mounts that we're gonna throw on. Justin's straight killing it over here. Gotta give him credit for doing this. I'm working on a hitch mount right now for for the Smitty Built winch. Um, so I'll have a receiver for a truck and then I'll also have a receiver for my trailer um, this is gonna be the one that goes on the trailer boom bolts on there welds on the front of the trailer and then this one will be for a standard receiver uh, something we use the right CNC plasma to do here's the winch all assembled um, yeah the Smitty built 995k is gonna be badass have to finish putting it all together. Um, obviously, I'm finalizing that. But uh, back to this 8.8. .8. Um, super, super simple. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a whole lot to know what you're doing, right, dude? No, definitely not. Look at me. <laughs> Come on, Doug. Uh, you have the same. You have the same rear end on your. Yeah, I got an 8.8 .8 on the Explorer. Dude, let's let's take a break and show me your explorer, man. Get that nut started and come show me Whoa. this thing. It's badass. What do you dude. want me to do with that nut? Take, it easy, take a break on that nut, dude. I didn't realize it was <laughs> <laughs> Caught off over here. So we did the same swap, 8.8 .8 on the Jeep, uh, and we beat the hell out of this with welded spiders, spider gears, 
Uh, what do you got? You got a diff, or you got, or you got a limited slip? You got no, you weld Detroit True Track. It's a Moser, all right. It's a Moser build 8.8. .8. So okay. 4130 shafts, disc brakes. You spent some money. Unfortunately. No, but you know yeah. what? You get what you pay for. It. <laughs> Heck yeah! Check this cantilever system out. So. What's the ratio? Two to one? It's like 1.95 to one. It's super close, two to one. Okay. And they're 12 inch, 3032 bypass kings. What uh, what leaf pack? It's a custom made Deaver. So it was a F67 for a Toyota, and then they modified it and stretched it. So now it's a 69 inch long 14 pack. 69 inch long 14. 69 inch. Damn, yeah. Look at these. Look at these shackles, bro. All, all custom in-house, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, Coastal Fab Works out of Pismo Beach helped me build a lot of it. And it's got a 4.3 V6 with a supercharger on it. Pop the hood. Let's check this girl out, dude. Who's glass? It's all McNeil. McNeil's Mark, glass. Mark's, Mark's to blame for all of it. Mark's the homie. Yeah, and then Rick Fawcett out of Napomo built Ooh. the 4.3 for it. So it's got forged internal Smith Bros forged rods. It's a, it's a, we it's got a some cleaner. Truck. We might need to clean that. No, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Do. It's it not is, that it bad. It's pretty bad. It's a little, it's a little rough at times. Won't lie, won't lie. What, uh, what she put down roughly? I have no idea, but we're hoping for anything over 300. That would be cool. This thing's clean. I've seen you smash on this thing on IG, and uh, it's just super simple, but so effective, man. It I works mean, well. Beam, beams all the way with a single swing steer setup. I broke the four wheel drive shafts a couple weeks ago, so I got to get those fixed. Yeah, the swingers looks good. The four wheel drive did work prior. Yeah, though. four wheel drive was working. Okay, so you just broke a shaft. Yeah, I broke a half shaft. What uh, stock stock width? Uh, yeah, there's stock, stock width. width that's what's up. Turn 35 beams with the uh, uniball pivots on there. Yeah. Nice little cross member too, dude. That's sick. Yeah, camber, camber cross member pivot boxes. Camber right cross there. member pivot Radio boxes. Board. I like it how you uh, you gave it a little extra insurance and welded it to the chassis. Yeah. Mandatory, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mandatory. Show me the inside, I dude. Mean, if, if it's built better. I mean, it's filthy grill right now. Dude, no need, worries, man. Seats need some love. I'm waiting on some interior. Dude, sick little center console. Yeah, manual valve body for the transmission and everything. It's so tight. It's, it's a cool little truck, dude. Dude, this thing's rad. So it's a good little truck. I mean, you can you can go mild or you can go wild on these 8.8s. Tubs, um, the don't mind my laundry, but still got some oh, little no. tubs in the back, so all the tires clear. Dude, nothing, nothing moto rubs. boats, dude. You ready to go moto? Oh yeah, dude. I'm waiting. I know, dude. Just waiting. Yeah. Tis the season. This thing's clean. I know it's starting to warm up, dude. Well, that's sick, dude. We might have to like loading dock challenge this oh, thing a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. <laughs> you seen those ramps back there? Yeah, hey, I'm, hey, I'll do it once. <laughs> oh, nah. Shit. All right. So, yeah, dude. Um, needed some help with this. I got so much shit going on. He asked if uh, if I needed a hand, and you know what? Uh, we'll help the homies who are helping the homies, and all the homies are coming up. So, we're gonna get back to it. I'm gonna keep going on uh, what I got going. Um, but yeah, Justin's killing it on this right now. Love it. We just bled the brakes with a maximum brake fluid, the street and off road dot three dot four approved. Now we're making it race official, bro. We're making it all <laughs> yeah. touches, man. I love it, bro. It's all clean. One dollar can of spray paint goes a long way, baby. She's looking good though. Um, what would you say the hardest part of this was? Uh, probably just dragging the axle out. Right? <laughs> it's, uh, axles are heavy, man. They're not light. It's not that hard. If you have a welder and a little bit of ingenuity, the basically, when you get this thing up in the air and you unbolt the drive shaft on your stock setup, the most important thing is don't get over carried away and make sure that you have the right pinion angle. And then also make sure that your spring perches are center to center off of what your your old setup was i mean those are the two only big like big areas where you could fucking you could fuck up essentially other than that well the tube to the center section that'll help strengthen that make sure you get that nice and clean um luckily this this dude already cut all the old perches off and the old sway bar stuff off that saved us a whole bunch of time we're gonna get this painted, get the shocks back on, get the tires on, get it back at on the ground, check the diff fluid, make sure it's got diff fluid in it. It, was, it wasn't pump coming out as it sits and it's a little high. So we'll get that leveled and we'll put some, uh, some maximum gear oil in it. Uh, dude, you killed it, man. I mean, 
I didn't really get, you didn't really let me do much. <laughs> well, that was the point, man. <laughs> yeah, it's all a doggy. Yeah, it's Thank a good you. One, man. We'll go test driver and then uh, maybe loading dock this thing. Uh, probably a bad idea. Probably a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's an 8.8 .8 swap. Um, if you are four wheel drive, you got something you have to consider is the the gear ratios in the front diff and the rear. Um, make sure they match before you blow your T case up, or you have your tires spinning at different um, different ratios, which could could do some serious damage, especially if you're on the street. Um, but yeah, it's. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing he is gonna have to do after this leaves uh, leaves the shop is the um, e-brake. If he wants to retain his e-brake, he's gonna have to get the uh, different cables. Otherwise, we'll go test drive this thing, check the diff fluid, and that's pretty much it for an 8.8 .8 swap. Not a whole lot to it. So I don't know if that helps anyone, but it is what it is. This is just another day in the grind. However, earlier I showed you my winch setup I was making. So I added a, a piece in between the two rails here, the angle and the inch and a half. I also put a little top piece on there. And then now my winch will sit on top of the base plate and then the rollers will bolt up there, cut those out on the right CNC. And then this is for the hitch of a truck. So that way if anyone in the dunes needs to use it, they can pop this thing out, take the battery and, uh, and put that Smitty built winch on the back of their truck and either winch someone out of a, a deep gnarly hole that you know a buggy or uh, a truck can't get into or shouldn't unless they're gonna get themselves in trouble or they wanna have the cat come get them. Um, this is an option with that long winch cord and a couple toe straps, easy peasy. I'm also going to put it another mount in the floor of the 42 footer. So I have water tanks and a bunch of other stuff up in there that I am going to, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this wrap, but there's ghosted shakas in the sunset. <laughs> okay, back to it. But, so, uh, I got three giant water tanks in here, which is nice, but basically I'm going to come to that second rail. I'm gonna post something up there and then I'm also going to put a couple kickers from each side forward and back so it picks up three of those just because those are super thin. Probably they sound like by tapping on them they sound like 065. So in order to do that and be safe with pulling the buggy up in here um, I'm going to have it come down a little bit to where I can pick up the bottom of it and I can triangulate it upwards I'll just show you guys in a little bit. So that's my next next task. Um, get this mini built winch put on the trailer. And this is just one of the days of madness. I want you guys to see. I usually show it through my Instagram stories, but this is what keeps all the wheels turning. It's just non-stop, wide open, and I wouldn't change it for anything else. Check out this mess. Oh yeah. <laughs> So what I did is I used this long skinny drill bit and I came up from the bottom through my female um, on the bottom, centered it, and then I did an inch and a half hole saw. What's up cowboy? You're always making a mess. <laughs> always making a mess. <laughs> and then I used this coarse carbide bit to hog out the aluminum and then I used the back side of the bit right here and I'd come up and I just chunked the shit out of the wood until I got it like pretty close and then I'd use the bit to actually eat it. Come, come check out the bottom. You afraid that you're gonna have to winch your car? I mean, you never know, dude. One time I did break and I had to freaking have like 10 people push the thing in. Especially when I have my flat tires always, my flat spares. So, boom, here's my quick release hitch pin. Um, I tied all three of these together. So when, if you think about it, when this thing is putting is loaded the top is wanting to come forward that's why i have this one on the top and the back is wanting to twist down that's why i have this kicker coming up to this rail pull the pin she's not perfectly off of the top deck so she drops down a tiny bit and then now i can put it on the front of the other trailer if need be and or did you see the back of that? How I could put it on the back of a truck if I needed to? Yeah. That way in case if 
when your car is done for next season, while we're testing it, we gotta winch it out of a big giant hole like we almost had to with Travis. <laughs> we're not gonna have to do that with my car. Fucking <laughs> jinx me before it's done, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, so that was pretty much part of today's grind. What else do I have to do? I have a whole checklist of shit still. So um, I'm gonna paint all this shit up and see where we're at in the time of the day. But so far, gotten a lot done today. Take that thing to Swift and have them powder coat that thing. I might take it to Swift and have them powder coat that thing. That'd be nice. Okay. It'd look wagged. No. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because it's going to be outside a lot. So, yeah, I don't even know what day it is, but today has been a good day so far. Tuesday. Haven't really had. Today's Tuesday. I wish we could get tacos and this quarantine wasn't still in effect. Um, but. That sucks. Yeah, it's the little things. I'm going to actually mount this thing up to the winch and put it on the front so we can see what it looks like. This bad boy's tight. It's got a little LED light right behind it so you can see all your uh, cables. And then it has another, another little uh, auxiliary power switch for that girl. That's cool. Uh, also, what's going to be powering it is this full throttle battery here. You see? You see now? So um, now it's on my bracket. It's heavy as shit, though. <laughs> what do you think this thing weighs, cowboy? Too much. Better than what you're trying to pull with that damn thing. You never know. I guess. I mean, we can put it to the back of the diesel. It's better to have. Motorhomes. It's better to have too big than too little, right? Uh, it depends on who you are. Ask a woman that opinion. Oh, hey. Uh, Would you rather have it too big or too little? <laughs> Smart, no call, man. <laughs> well, that answers your question. <laughs> Sick, I want to set this thing up on the rig and see what it looks like. I'm going to have to disconnect this battery, though, because there's too much going on. But this thing is rad, looks so sick. Military, industrial, heavy duty. There she is. Hitch pin goes in nice. I had it to where when it when it's sitting there, it slides in very nicely because it rests on this the back side there. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see her. Tight. She looks good. She's ready. Hopefully, I don't have to have to use her. But there's been a couple times where I've had close calls, and we've had to do some other maneuvering. So. Uh, shout out to Four Wheel Parts for having this badass Smitty built winch that uh, could potentially save the day for me or for you know a friend out in the desert. And uh, full throttle battery for always keeping my batteries fresh and laced out. And the nice thing is, like, I haven't had to replace any of those for the last two years, which is awesome. Um, and I I run those suckers hard. I'll literally take the thing at shows with whether it's the Bug, the Jeep, the Megalodon, the Class 11, the Razor, and I'll have like all the interior lights and stuff on and then uh, use the other battery or or just let it sit overnight and thing fires up and charges back up. I don't know how they do it, but they're doing something right. So it's a wrap for today. Tomorrow, hopefully we bang gears and we'll leave it at that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of today's little whatever it was that we did.